Thank you. Uh, yeah, my name is Martin Holtman. Um, I'm currently employed at, uh, as associate professor at Chalmers University of Technology, but I've been uh, uh, a long-term scholar here at Linköping University, uh, defending my dissertation here uh, a couple of years ago, and then also been part of the startup phase of uh, the Seedbox and environmental humanities. And I'm actually going to talk uh, about something that was a seed from the environmental humanities here that has uh, evolved and developed and been nourished and grown into a research project on climate change denial. But first, um, I would like you to um, close your eyes and think about uh, two things, to pause a bit and think about climate change. I would like you to think about when did you first think about climate change? And secondly, when did you first feel climate change? Welcome back. Um, uh, I think that we sometimes miss that um, climate change and when we bring it down to earth, the, our actual dependence and uh, also our actual addiction to fossil fuels, 80% of uh, the energy sold and used around the world is fossil fuels. Uh, sometimes missed when you think about climate change as something going on somewhere else or, or in other countries and not connected to us. But it is, it is here, down to earth, and, and in our bodies all the time. Uh, this, the project of climate change denial that uh, I work with now um, as part of uh, a grant from Seedbox called uh, Tropology of uh, Climate Change. Um, and uh, we will have uh, our uh, conference uh, in January in which we bring together a scholarship on that. Uh, but my thinking about climate change denial comes out of the uh, notion and the knowledge that we have known uh, about climate change, how um, crucial it is to deal with it for over 30 years. Uh, in the late 1980s, um, climate change was up on the political agenda. Uh, in Sweden, uh, one of the most effective policy instruments was actually uh, put in place in the late 1980s, beginning of 1990s, called a, a carbon dioxide tax. Uh, the uh, issue was among the citizens, uh, it was up at the core level of the leadership for the companies. But still, there's been 30 years and we're not even close today to actually deal with this issue as the existential issue as it is. My uh, starting point to think about this is also coming out of a book called Living in Denial by the American-Norwegian sociologist Kari Marie Norgard. She uh, exposed our uh, non, how we do not deal with climate change by researching a small community or not a, as a, such a small community, a small city in Norway and uh, asked questions, how could, can we have this type of knowledge and not act upon it? <coughs> and she uh, um, exposed the strategies of describing our particular or that communities or that country's particular small contribution to climate change. She also exposed that we are still within, we, we still think that technology will save us in the future. So um, it will come a solution. She also exposed the idea that 
uh, Norway as well as Sweden think of ourselves as environmental leaders. So we are really already uh, as good as we can. We cannot be that much better. We should, we should instead export our solutions and not take that into account that we need to change our structures, our ideas and, and what we do. Um, so I work with uh, four different forms of climate change denial. Organized, which is very much funded by the oil and gas industry and into lobby groups that are um, <coughs> creating counter, uh, counter climate change research. But also political. So today we have the double challenge of climate change and energy at the same time as we have the right-wing political parties, the neo-fascist political parties in Europe bringing in and taking up cl climate change denial as one of their core uh, uh, parts of their ideolo ideology, uh, trying to uh, wipe away all the progress that has been made on climate change policies. But then we also have response po uh, climate change denial in which leaders in societies as Sweden, for example, can put money into building a new airport in Sälen at the same time as they know that the emission from that airport will be increasing uh, the, the levels of emissions in the, into the atmosphere. And not le least, but not last, le last but not least, the everyday denial that Carmen Nor got exposed in her book *Living in Denial*, that we, many of us, know of the issue, but we haven't been able to actually change our lifestyles or the way that we live or, or how we work with climate change denial in accordance to what we need to do. Thank you for listening. <coughs>